This is Goku's son, DBC. And today, I thought I'd give my honest evaluation. I will be giving you my overall opinion and discuss a little bit about both. Giving you my final verdict on two story modes that I played in the last two weeks. That is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and Street Fighter V or Street Fighter V story modes. Which, of course, I have uploaded my the complete playthrough of the story mode of Street Fighter V. As I mentioned in the last video, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite because it had a block on being able to record footage from the story mode. Everything else you can record on a Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, like Arkimo and all that. But yeah, for some reason, story mode is blocked from recording taking pictures or anything for that matter. So that kind of sucks. I wanted to show footage and stuff. So, because of that, you'll, if you want to actually watch overall story mode of the game, you're going to have to go to somebody that actually has the capabilities to do it properly with HD quality and everything. That being Maximilian, dude. With that said, this is my honest opinion stuff. Play a little bit of music from Street Fighter V. But, anyways, my opinion, first I'll talk about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. One thing I will say about the film, or rather, the story mode, that it's kind of messed up and jumbled every which where I genuinely enjoyed Street Fighter V story mode much more, but with that said, on Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite storyline, we have, of course, what is called the Convergence that happened. It starts like many days after the Convergence actually happened, which it starts out on the beginning part, which you saw in the beta. Uh, or rather, demo of, of course, the story mode. So, with that said, the first some uh, matches start out easy, and as the game progresses, it gets harder. And like Street Fighter V, there is no difficulty settings on the story mode, unlike, say, Tekken 7, which actually did give you the option. So, by the end of the game, you can expect to be struggling with a lot of the last fights. I'd say the first fight that you really see a spike in, the thing is, this convergence, thanks to the fusion of, of course, Sigma and Ultron, Green Ultron Sigma, with the uh, Reality Gem or Stone, whichever you want to call it, and Space would fuse these two realities together. And we learn later on in story mode, so yes, spoiler alert, we learn that originally the idea was suggested by Jedda from Darkstalkers. Ends up in the realm, I guess you could say, of darkness, whatever you want to call it. But he talks to Lady Death and suggests an idea. And so to try and fuse the rounds together. Lay Death likes the idea of balancing out death and life. Because Jetta states that there is more people alive in the universe than there are dead. And there needs to be a balance between the two. And his suggestion definitely intrigues Lady Death. So, she manipulates, of course, Thanos. Thanos brings in and shows us our reality because living cannot enter that, and of course it ends up being Ultron. Though of course Ultron, with Sigma, concoct a plan. So, like a day later, on the day of the Convergence, they trick Thanos in the lab. And together they end up fusing with, of course, the Reality Gem. And then take Space Gem... From, of course, Thanos. As we see, in the Blocked Up, we see a lot of other characters in story mode. There are characters in the game 
and stuff in the swimming pool that really don't do jack squat, in all honesty. I don't know what they are meant to be used for or what their importance is. Characters like Spencer are worth jack squat. He's an annoying character, to be fair. I just don't like the guy. I don't like his design. I don't like his gameplay or anything. Or his personality, or lack thereof. But it's interesting, especially interesting when you see other things like combined together, like the world of Monster Hunter merges with Yukonda uh, or whatever, and it becomes Valconda. Which is kind of interesting to say the least. Uh, also, Umbrella from, of course, the Capcom universe merges from the Marvel Universe AIM and becomes like AIMbrella or something like that. Some stupid combination name like that. And we see instead of Wesker being in charge, which Wesker is nowhere to be seen of course in this game, the one calling the shots in this new merger version of Umbrella is the head of AIM himself, MODOK. He's calling the shots alongside with Jetta. Creating a new hybrid, I guess you could say, mixture between the T or G virus merged with the symbiotes. So that's interesting. It creates these interesting, weird creatures. And a giant, creepy, gigantic symbiote dog of sorts, I guess you could say. Which is like Jetta's little baby. Which has the soul stone inside it. So yeah. Needless to say. And then also you get a fight Nemesis. And he's when the difficulty starts jumping up. In the story mode is definitely Nemesis. I love though the design of Nemesis in this game. I think he looks way better than he did in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. As my own personal opinion... Gameplay-wise, he's pretty much the same for the most part. He hasn't really changed any in gameplay. I think I like some of those stuff that he did do differently. I prefer some of his gameplay better in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But his design is far superior in this game, in my opinion. Uh, other characters I don't really get why they were in the game, or rather story mode, is characters like Frank West, but I never played the... Like a Dead Rising series, so I can't really give an honest evaluation of the character. Hagar is definitely cool. He definitely is good for submission, holds like his power bombs and stuff do heck damage. Um, and then as we get towards the end, finally like Iron Man gets a flashback of the past and he realizes how the convergence everything happened. Also, for a while, and by the way, Jetta is not working with, actually, um, Ultron Sigma. He is trying to be Ultron Sigma, so he can basically become, I guess you could think, the top ruler. And allies himself with other characters, such as Dormammu and many others. So it's interesting seeing these multiple different factions. But in the end, of course, Jetta fails, but... Oh yeah, if you do play story mode, do not skip the credits. There is an after credits scene in the video clip. Surprise, surprise. <coughs> an after credits scene in a Marvel-related property. Boy, what a surprise there. Sorry. Coughing. Anyways, um, on that, I will say... Overall, the story mode, it's okay, don't get me wrong. I love the designs, especially on characters like freaking Ultron Sigma. He is just amazing looking. His design, how sleek, smooth. I'm not a graphics, I guess, say a, a graphics, uh, like, freak or some Like, I don't really always care about great graphics, but... Still, a lot of the designs in this game are awesome. There are some flawed designs on some characters, but I'd say the biggest, two of the biggest pet peeves I have is overall, 
the story is feels like it was kind of chopped together for the most part. Now the gameplay, I will say, is where this game really shines. In all honesty, is the gameplay elements. I'm finally starting to get the hang of the gym system now, and boy, I'll tell you what. Probably one of the best stones to have in the game is the time stone, only because of the ability of able to teleport back and forth. That is really good, especially if you're playing with a character that is has good speed and stuff, or even slow. This will help speed up the slow characters like Thanos and others. But it really works well for characters like Iron Man and others. Are by far the best to use with that gem. Depending on the gameplay of the character it, and team you put together is really going to help judge what kind of, which one of the six stones you want to do. In RK mode, which you might have noticed in my first gameplay of RK mode, one thing that's cool about it is that you actually can change stones for each round, which is actually a really cool idea. That way you can come with different strategies depending on who your opponents are to what kind of stone to use. Um, final form at the end, once uh, Ultron Sigma is defeated, you see Omega. Was it uh, Ultron Omega? Which is actually more or less like just part of Ultron connected to a giant version body of Sigma, which is based off the design of one of Sigma's forms he took in one of the Mega Man X games that you have to fight him. I forget which X game, though, it was that this form was based off of. But it's really awesome. To those of us who grew up with the Mega Man X games, you're going to love some of these elements. And definitely how they did, for the most part, they did a really good job with X. They did a good job with Zero. So to any old school Mega Man or Mega Man X fans, you're definitely going to appreciate this game because they actually do justice to X. Thank goodness I would... He was one of the characters I was worried about. Gameplay, he is way different than a regular Mega Man in gameplay. Take my word on that one. It's going to take a while to get used to his this Mega Man's style versus the Mega Man I was used to playing with. But, for me in this game right now, I'd say my five favorite characters to play with are, right now personally, Ryu... Uh, Gamora, I really like her style in the game. I also, even though I really, really need to improve with him, I really do like Jetta, to be honest. Of characters, I'm actually surprised I'm really enjoying play because I did not like him in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is Dormammu, of all characters. Uh, also, I really enjoy playing with Captain America. I've always been a fan of Captain America's gameplay style. With that said, but that's my opinion on the story mode overall. On a scale of 1 to 10, like I gave Tekken, probably a, like a 9.5 or a 10 out of 10 on their story mode. I give this game, honestly, an 8 out of 10 on the story mode as a whole. It definitely has a lot of areas it needs to improve on now. If I base the overall game, I think with gameplay, everything combined, Story Mode gets like an 8 out of 10. The game mechanics and stuff of that nature gets a 10 out of 10. But all around, all elements combined, I would have to give Marvel's Capcom Infinite a 9 out of 10. Not a 7 or whatever IGN crap does. Now, my opinion on... Street Fighter 5 story mode. In my personal opinion, this was actually a really good, really solid. As I've said before, even though I'm still trying, after all this time, I'm still trying to get used to the V-Trigger part of the gameplay and everything and get used to some of the other characters. Because I will tell you right now, I absolutely suck with characters like Vega. I just suck with them. I'll never be good with characters like Vega, ever. Um, and I'm not really good with at least the newer style of Bison. Bison in like Street Fighter 2 I actually was decent with. Um, of characters in this game, I will say, gameplay-wise, I really do like the completely different way that Charlie Nash plays now. 
of carry. He's also one I'd like to get better with over a longer period of time, do a lot more practice with. Um, also, if other characters I'd really like to get better with, honestly, is uh, Urian. I actually enjoy some of his abilities. I want to learn how to do like his electric shield and stuff like that, special V-Trigger. Definitely it'd be cool to get the hang of that. But, I will say, definitely, story mode is actually really good. I like some of the new characters, of course, they introduced in this game. They've actually introduced quite a few new characters. They also did a good job with returning characters like Jerry and others. And it was nice finally seeing them put in place a lot of seeds connecting with Street Fighter 3 universe, like Urian being brought into this game, or... I'm trying, darn it, to remember her name now. Uh, which, of course, becomes the right-hand lady of Lord Gill. Which, of course, you see in the post and a mid credits scene, of course. Lord Gill, officially. So, hopefully that means then Gill will be the big bad boss of Street Fighter VI. But, Lord help us, there's going to be a lot of boss rages on that guy. As somebody who has faced Gill multiple times now in Street Fighter Three games, he's a nightmare. To fight against, but he's certainly a good, worthy adversary. But he's cheap as heck. But overall, gameplay, or rather, gameplay, I have to give honestly the overall gameplay and in-game mechanics a Street Fighter V probably a nine to a nine point five out of ten. I think some of the gameplay elements of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite are actually superior. But, overall, the gameplay is still super solid as a Street Fighter game, easily one of the best games in the series in mechanics. As I said, give it a 9 to a 9.5 out of 10, so that's a really good overall. I honestly have to give this story mode, believe it or not, a 10 out of 10. It's really the first time they've ever actually added any character development to characters in the Street Fighter franchise as a whole. So that's a nice and refreshing thing to see, in all honesty. I very much, as you know, this gameplay, I died quite a few times against, obviously, Bison at the end, but it's freaking Bison, and that stupid Psycho Crusher special big trigger and everything he has makes him ridiculous. But, with that said, yeah, I give Story Mode a 10 out of 10, overall game of case a 9.5 out of 10, and Jerome. I give, on a score of 1 to 10, to this game, I give Street Fighter V a 9.5 out of 10. Yep. Though, I don't like the individual story mode things with the very cheap clips and stuff, but you can tell they went all out with the actual story mode. Main characters I find annoying in story mode. One specific character that really annoys me. Whereas a couple in Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Fang. Fang really annoys me big time in the story mode of Street Fighter V. Just him. But there's definitely a lot of Easter eggs in the game for obviously Street Fighter Three fans like Urian, uh, of course the young lady. Um, which of course... You end up seeing at the very end, of course, a little bit of a, I guess you could say, a look at Gil. You have, also talk about, mention the Secret Society, though not the Illuminati, as they actually say in Street Fighter 3 games. You have this young, of course, grappler, female character, which you see from Brazil. And the introduction, though he's not playable, of her little brother, which, by the way, is Sean. Which will, of course, become the pupil of Ken Masters in the Street Fighter 3 series. And also, you have several other elements to connect Street Fighter 3 in. But I felt, for the most part, and obviously that little girl that's a hacker, apparently, which chung -E ends up rescuing. That's the same little girl that chung -E is raising in the Street Fighter 3 timeline. So, they actually did a very good job in Street Fighter 5. Tying up loose ends of the era of Bison and the soon to come era of Gil. So we'll see how things go in Street Fighter 6, which I'm actually looking really forward to. 
but I'll see you all next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. And yes, I said, the final verdict. A 9 out of 10 for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and a 9.5 out of 10 to Street Fighter V. Keep in mind, that's my own personal opinions. Leave yours below. And I'll see you all next time. If you get a chance, seriously, play the story mode on both games. Though, it's not the super best story mode overall with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I will tell you, if you haven't picked up Street Fighter V, get Street Fighter V. At least get the very base for 20 bucks. That's not bad. And you can download for free the story mode. And take my word, the story mode is more than worth your about three, three and a half hours of time to play. If you're a Street Fighter fan, you'll really appreciate all the Easter eggs and all of the elements in the story mode. But I'll get off for now, and I'll see you next time.